With stoichiometry, there comes the need for the use of the stoichiometric chart. Now, use this chart when given a chemical equation. Not only just a simple chemical equation, but a balanced chemical equation. Um, with the known quantity of a compound or element, and asked to find the unknown quantity of another compound or element. So that's when we use this stoichiometric chart. The information that's going to be given to you, we're just going to simply call our given information. Now, this given information can come in different forms. They can give it to you in grams, moles, or entities. Now, when I say entities, entities just refers to atoms, ions, molecules, or formula units. Now, remember, we discussed these types of ideas when we covered mass conversions. Atoms deals when we're talking about a single neutral element. Ions is when we're talking about a single charged element. Molecules is for covalent compounds. And formula units is for ionic compounds. If you don't recall that, make sure you go take a look back at the um, summary video as well as our chapter videos dealing with mass conversions. Now, the information again will be given in usually one of these three forms. And it's our job to go from the given information to our unknown information. Now, the unknown information that we ask you to find could be moles, uh, could be grams, could also be entities, one of these four terms. Now, following this chart, when we get to moles of given information, we have to make a jump from stuff that we know to stuff we don't know. And when we do this jump, we have to do a mole to mole comparison. That means we have to use the coefficients in the balanced equation. For example, on the, on the right side, we say how many grams of carbon dioxide will be produced from 36.2 grams of acetone, which is C3H6O. The balanced equation is one mole of acetone as a liquid reacts with four moles of oxygen gas to produce three moles of carbon dioxide gas and three moles of water vapor. Now realize that they give me grams of acetone. So that represents my grams of given information. Then they're asking me to find grams of CO2. So that represents my grams of unknown. So that just means that on our stoichiometric chart, we're going from this space here and we have to journey all the way to over here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we write down, we have 36.2 grams of acetone. We have to go from grams of given to moles of given. To change grams to moles, we use the molecular mass of acetone. Acetone has in it three carbons, six hydrogens, and one oxygen. These numbers here come from the periodic table. They are the atomic masses of each of those elements. When we multiply them by the number of each element, we get a total. We add them up and we get the mass of the compound. Looking at our setup, grams of acetone cancel out. Now we have moles of acetone, which represents our moles of given. Next, we're going to go from moles of acetone to moles of our unknown, which is carbon dioxide. Again, we're making a jump here, and so we have to use the coefficients from the balanced equation. So for every one mole of acetone, we have three moles of carbon dioxide. Finally, we're here at moles of unknown. And the last step, we're just going to change moles of unknown to grams of unknown. Again, we use the molecular mass of the compound. Carbon dioxide has in it one carbon and two oxygens. Getting their masses from the periodic table, multiplying and then adding them together gives us our total mass of carbon dioxide. In our chart, we see that moles of acetone cancel out moles of carbon dioxide cancel out, and we're going to have our total here at the end, which represents our grams of unknown information. This is the way we approach any type of stoichiometric question. Remember the stoichiometric chart, apply what we've learned here, and you can answer any question dealing with a balanced equation and given information.